Okay, I'm going to show you guys how to replace a coolant inverter pump on a 2003 Prius, so any first gen. They're very similar to the uh, rest of the generations of the Prius in the job itself, but how do you diagnose a failed pump? First, you can't hear it. It usually makes a little bit of a whining noise there. And then when you look inside of the coolant reservoir, you should be able to see motion in there. Right now, the, the car is in the on position. The... Uh, combustion engine just turned off so it's in a full state of charge and uh, this pump should be running at all times no matter what so as long as the car's in the on position or in the ready position so it's in the ready position right now and there's zero flow in there I don't know if, uh, how well you'll be able to see on the camera but when there's flow you can see it all whirling around in this uh, see-through container here so the pump is actually just right there where the tip of my finger is Ooh, it's, it's kind of hot but uh, right under this AC line is where the pump is. It's got it's super easy. It's one uh, connector and two hoses that go to it. It's just a 12 volt pump. Let me show you guys what I bought to replace it with. I got it on Amazon and it was the, about 150 bucks. I want to say I might be wrong on that, but it's a legit Toyota wa water pump. Here's the part number, the Toyota part number, and um, this is what it looks like here. It's pretty self-explanatory. Like I said, two hoses and one electrical connector. That's only two wires, so it's just 12 volts. And that's pretty much it. And I think uh, there's like two volts that bolt it in place in the car. Now the fun part. The first thing you're going to want to do is obviously turn the car off so it doesn't start while you're in there. And the bumper needs to come out to give you room. Like the, the pump is easy to get to. But it, it looks like it's easy to get to, but you saw how big the bracket is under it, so we need to get this headlight out of the way. So in order to do that, we're going to need to take these screws out. There's two here, and uh, there is, I don't know if I'll be able to show you guys. There's, a, there's these two screws up top, and then uh, along the kick panel on the bottom, let me lay down here. You can kind of see it right here. These screws... Oh, I can see a bunch of water here. Oh, actually, I just drove through a puddle. I thought I had a coolant leak for a second. But you need to take the screws off here that hold the front bumper in, and then there's like two plastic clips right here that I've taken off in the past. But if the car's never been apart, these will be clipped into this metal brace down here. So let's get the bumper off, and then I'll show you guys what else we need to do. Okay, I've got the headlight, the driver's side headlight out and the bumper disconnected here. Uh, I was fortunate enough to where I did not need to disconnect the bumper on the bottom. I just disconnected, um, I unbolted these two screws up here. And then there's also a third here that my car seems to be missing. So if your car's never been touched, you're going to have one, two, three screws to take off. And then you want to come in here and you want to peel this back. Let me see if it shows up on the camera. And when you peel it back, there's a screw right up here. You see how this has got a notch? The, not, the screw goes vertically up against into this. So one, two, three, four screws. Same thing on this side, just to kind of give you that leeway. And then my bumper was actually missing. There's supposed to be another one right here, but my bumper is broken. And then you have the two screws up here for the headlight. One right here, um, I believe it was these two at the top of the headlight, right here. As you can see, my headlight's also broken. And then the headlight has a hidden, another third one that's right there. Point at it with my pinky. Once you get all that, you gotta wiggle the headlight out and then you can undo your plugs. This plug was very complicated, didn't wanna come out, so I just took the whole bulb out with it. And now you have access to your inverter coolant pump, which is right here. Looks like it's going to have two 10 millimeter bolts holding it in. So I'm going to take those off, unplug the electrical connector, and then I got to reach these hoses and clamp the hoses before I take them off. Now I also want to share this trick with you guys uh, so you don't have to drain all of the coolant out of this inverter. Uh, when you take these hose off, these hoses off, it will leak, uh, especially because the reservoir is way up there and it'll just come all the way down this hose and leak all over you. So what I'm gonna do to not have to drain it and to hopefully not make a mess, I've got a regular just door hinge here uh, that was laying around in the garage. I'm gonna put the hose inside of it and then I'm gonna vice grips 
vice grip it shut. So it's essentially just gonna crimp that hose so it can stop all the coolant. And I'm only gonna do the top one just because there's not much space in here and I'm gonna hope that's enough. I'm gonna hope that gravity will hold the rest of the coolant on the bottom. If it doesn't, I guess you guys will, will see that you'll learn from this. <laughs> okay, so it was a really tight fit in there, so I actually just got two big washers and I used that to clamp uh, instead of the um, that door hinge because the door hinge would not fit. So I don't know if that's gonna be enough to be honest. I don't think it is, but uh, I'm kind of over it, so we're just gonna send it. Okay, this thing was a really big pain in the butt to take out, so I ended up having to as you can see, I replaced the hose clamps because those old hose clamps are this style right here and they're just completely awful because this is just too wide for any of my pliers. So I couldn't find a tool to get that taken off and it was a really big pain. So definitely do not want to reuse those in case I have to come back in here again. Um, I just turned the car on. Uh, this isn't even bolted down yet, but I've got both hoses on. Uh, and oh, also my hose clamp trick did not work and uh, I spilled coolant everywhere all over the place. So I need to go get some more coolant before I can actually go uh, bleed the system and test wrap the car. But I did plug it in and I turned the ignition on and I can, and just holding this, you can feel the actual pump working. So that way uh, I know my wiring going to it is good. Uh, I guess I could have checked that before I diagnosed a, a bad pump, but I kind of just dove into it because that's typically what happens. I don't see why a relay or something else would have gone bad to trigger a... Uh, make me think that the pump was gone bad when it actually was not. So I'm just gonna put this back together, put these two tens in here, put the headlight in, bumper on, go get some coolant and bleed the system. Okay, we got the new pump in there. We got some coolant in there. Let's see if you guys can see. Yeah, you can see it sloshing around in there. That's how you know the pump is working. You can also hear it down here if you listen closely. Now, one thing to note is that the car will not throw a code if you uh, if your inverter pump goes out. The, what's going to happen is the inverter is going to overheat and then it'll throw a code. So it's good maintenance every time you do an oil check or something. Pop the hood and see if there's coolant floating or flowing around in that uh, little reservoir because I don't know how long my coolant pump was not working for. Uh, it didn't really overheat until we stress tested the car. So uh, if it's not too hot outside and you're not stressing out the hybrid system too much, it may not overheat. But uh, for longevity purposes, that pump always needs to be running, so it's good to make sure. It's